All right, so with that being said, hey, everybody, I'm Bess Aliu. I'm here with a very talented and very special guest, Edan Mola. What's up, everybody? I'm very honored to be in, in the studio with you. For sure, for sure. Blessing, my God, man. man, my guy. Just want to dap you up before. Oh, man, always. <laughs> so everybody knows, you know, we're here with Maj Aliu in the back. who will be behind the camera, behind the scenes. So, uh, Edan, yo, yo. if I'm not mistaken, you got something special coming out on October 4th. Yes, sir. The album, uh, for Marita comes out on Sunday. Blessing. I'm yeah. hyped to hear, man. I'm hyped to hear. I mean, I heard a little bit already, you know, but. <laughs> yeah, you heard I'm, it a lot. Of <laughs> I'm, I'm hyped for everybody to hear. So tell me a little bit about the album. Like, what's, what's the process been like? Well, what made you say, you know, I really want to make this album. Yeah, so, I mean, you know this because I emailed you and texted you five billion times with remix of the album and remix of songs, and and I appreciate having, for the first album, I didn't have anyone to, to bounce ideas off of or throw my music at to for someone to listen to. So just having you there as a set of ears to be able to say, ah, oh, man, like, that's terrible, or like, you need to work on that at least um biggest blessing of this album um is being able to to have that um the process i i wanted to do everything start to finish um just because if someone doesn't like my album i want it to be because they don't like my album as opposed to like having 15 writers and having 15 producers on it and then being able to say oh actually you don't like that part but that's actually this person yeah somebody it's, else it's yeah, somebody yeah. else's mistake not mine no like if you hear a mistake on the album it's this guy but you hear that this album is 100 percent him from the start to the very end so if i'm not mistaken right you produced it wrote it sang mixed and mastered everything entirely on your own yes sir see listen to that how crazy is that not only is the man incredibly handsome but listen to how talented this dude is. There's nothing he cannot do. Nothing he cannot do. So when did you start working on this album? It's been about a year and a half. The first song um, I wrote, ironically, two or three months before the first album came out. Um, so I started working on the new album before the first album alone came out. Um, and the process is just pretty crazy for me. Um, so the album's for Marita, and basically it's a person that's really close to me. Um, and I spent about a few months in and out of the hospital taking care of this person and writing about half of the, like more than 60% of the album from a hospital room. Um, and I'm not saying that to for anyone to just feel bad or, or have pity, but I, I just want everyone to know that it's important to to realize if there's something you want to do, what no matter what it is, as ridiculous as it sounds, writing an album from a hospital room is possible. Anything is possible. So if there's if you have a passion for something and you want to get it done, it doesn't matter what is your obstacle, you're able to do it. I, I can attest to that. And yeah, 60% of this album, there's going to be some dark songs you're going to hear and just dark moments. Um, and then there's going to be really happy moments in it that are written from the perspective of, oh, if life was better, here's how I imagined it. Um, I'd meet this girl at a, a bar or a club as opposed to being where I'm at right now, or I'd meet the love of my life, you know? So yeah. that everybody's hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like, sounds like this kind of, this album really, you have to dig very deep into yourself to try to not only cope with everything that's kind of happening around you, but at the same time, like try to create this world around you to help you escape and kind of give you something to look forward to and channel who you are as a person into your music. Yeah, just definitely. Um, I'm blessed and I know you and my Lind are also blessed to have a passion in life. I know many people that don't, that crazy, don't have right? an outlet. It's it, crazy. I couldn't imagine going waking up every day and not knowing what I want to do with it. 
like I wake up every single day, no matter how stressed or how tired or how difficult it is, knowing that there's something I want to do, whether it's work on a new song, work on my ability at singing or playing an instrument. It's just being driven and wanting to achieve something in, in that realm and having that honestly pushed me forward. Otherwise, I, I don't know where I'd be. Yeah, so that's that's kind of an interesting point because I want to focus on the album and music in general, but that kind of leads an interesting thought in my mind where if you didn't have that passion, which like you said, I'm I'm very happy you made a point of it because we are incredibly lucky, you know, and everybody does have that thing, but also people need to find, like it takes time to find it to get to that point in life. Like when did you feel like you... I always say this, we don't find music, it finds us. music yeah. finds us, whether or not we like it, you know, it's just the life that chose us. So when do you feel like this is something that chose you? It's hilarious because in fifth grade, I, I joined chorus and you know the story, but I joined chorus to, to skip last period class. I didn't like music at all. Um, I thought singing in front of somebody is the most ridiculous thing you can do. Why would anyone ever want to do that? <laughs> Like, why would someone, <laughs> for pleasure, go in front of thousands of people or hundreds of people and want to sing? It just baffled my brain. Um, so I joined specifically to get out of last period. I hated it so much that I was the tallest kid in my chorus, so I was all the way in the back, and there was probably 60 or 70 kids in my chorus. And I lip-synced to the wrong song every single performance. Um, and then On purpose? No, I just didn't learn the songs. Like, I hated it so much, I didn't even bother learning the lyrics to the songs I was lip singing. I was just there, like, in the back, which is ridiculous. But um, flash forward, like, 10 years or something like that later, um, and I'm sitting in a cafeteria. I played basketball um, my whole life, and as, a, as an athlete, you kind of sit with the athletes. That's kind of like... The click. The click, you know? And I, I really didn't like... The idea of being stuck at one table for four years, I, I like the idea of getting to know everybody. And my favorite click, quote unquote, was the 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 theater kids. The theater kids were really creative. They were kind. Um, they weren't worried about s certain things that the, the jocks or athletes were worried about. They were more worried about like singing and bringing people together and having a great time during lunch. And one kid, Jonathan Moret, brought his guitar in. I think this was senior year. Um, and started singing and playing guitar for everybody. And there was like a giant circle of like 20 kids. And I could not understand why everyone was surrounding this, this guy with a guitar. Meanwhile, I lived under a rock and never really seen anyone play guitar before. So it was just the most amazing, miraculous thing in, that I've ever experienced. Um, so I told John, I was like, hey, like, can you teach me how to play? And he's like, you got to get a guitar first. And I'm like, all right, let, how much can a guitar cost? And my parents, like, we my family didn't have a lot of money growing up obviously um and we we go to a guitar center which guitars there are probably like 100 200 bucks but for some reason the guitars that we were he was showing me were like three thousand like four thousand dollars and i was just like john like he how i want you to play <laughs> he didn't want yeah he didn't want to teach me how to play guitar i want the attention off of him <laughs> just kidding jonathan <laughs> my bad uh, continue <laughs> <laughs> so i i'm like um, and we get out of there and he starts laughing and I'm like, he's like, yeah, those are just like the platinum guitars and like the really expensive ones. Um, but they didn't have any other guitars. He brought me to a, like another store, which had like hundred dollar guitars that were used. And in my head, the, like this guy, this guy's like telling me, he didn't realize it at the time, but he was saying like, oh, it's just a hundred bucks. Like, you know, and for him, a hundred dollars was was just something that you can throw at a guitar but for me i was like yeah i'm not uh, how do i tell this person that i i can't afford a hundred dollar guitar like yeah. it's embarrassing especially as a high school kid um so i told him oh i just wasn't very interested um and we left that guitar that guitar store and we started walking our school luckily had a um pawn shop that was maybe like two three blocks away um and some dudes literally throwing out an acoustic guitar and i asked him like hey like what are you doing with that? And he goes, oh, I'm just throwing it out. The neck's broken, so you can have it if you'd like. And then I just fixed that guitar up and started learning on that. Um, so that was probably the the driving force behind 
me picking the instrument up and then just starting to m- mess around and learning and fall in love with it and everything yeah, yeah. crazy man the universe just helps you out works in mysterious ways just Seriously. when you're looking at three thousand dollar guitars one second you know and god just comes through and says you know what you really want to do this here you go god the universe whatever you want to call it here you go you know and i i definitely relate to you on that with the guitar because i remember my first guitar i got it from my mom told my mom you know mommy i really want to try to learn how to play guitar you yeah. know and shout out to my brother because he kind of got me interested in it too machlindo 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 say it one two three times <laughs> and uh yeah, it was the same price. That's crazy. A hundred dollars. Like Yeah, probably like a Yamaha or something. It was, nah, man, it was a guitar that went out of tune. It was a black Epiphone. Epiphone that I got from my mom's Guyanese coworker who just did not want to play anymore and convinced for a hundred bucks. So yeah, hundred dollar guitars go. is that's what it takes, man. <laughs> that's really the key to, to getting it. So all right, let's fast forward a little bit. Yeah. So you're like what, a senior in high school around this time? Yeah. Um about to graduate, um, looking at colleges and playing sports in college and not even really thinking about music at this point. So your focus is still basketball, you're Yeah, still the jock. Yeah. AKA. The mentality. No, no, I mean yeah. it's it's cool, you know. Everybody has their has their thing. But so you started to feel like internally there was kind of a shift that started to happen with you? Yeah, I I've ne I've been to basketball games and what I witnessed in a cafeteria was more magical than seeing the Knicks play in my head. Crazy. Like watching a kid play a guitar in, in a cafeteria was more exciting to me than going to see front row tickets at a Knicks game. Like it didn't excite me at all. I remember going to games and I hated watching it, which just if you love something, I don't think that's. Yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> is be, the Knicks though. To be my fair, can we help the Knicks get better, please? <laughs> somebody. So, and this is something I know because you told me. So you not only went to the best high school in the country for basketball, but you played in Madison Square Garden. You played and probably better than the Knicks <laughs> on their own floor. And and still with all of that, you found yourself kind of being called to music. It kept staying in the back of your head. You kept yeah. finding extra time on top of your already very busy schedule to just dedicate some time here and there to just get better. Yeah. playing guitar and singing it's interesting um it's kind of like a fever that kept rising i think is the best way to describe it like i started off practicing guitar for 30 minutes a day and then it just gradually built to an hour and then towards the rest like the final few weeks of senior year i was probably practicing guitar for two or three hours a day um and then i got to college and started practicing for four or five hours a day and started to learn how to sing and play guitar um um piano and violin and all these other instruments um so it was literally like it was just kept building just kept going up and up i definitely feel that i, I definitely had the same experience like something just catches your ear and you're just there yeah you're like all right let me put a little bit of time and then it just keeps going and yeah. keeps going so you picked up guitar first yeah and then at what point would you say i know you're singing a little bit Mm-hmm. But at what point would you really say you progressed a lot as a singer? Um, I think the real progression probably came before the first album. I knew if I was going to put out music that's my own, it had to be good. Like, in my head, good at the time. Now I look back, and I'm sure you can attest to anything you've put out before. And you're just like, dude, what the hell is that? You don't even like it after a while. <laughs> yeah, like, literally, like, I can't even listen to it. I'm just like, oh, God, like, I can't believe pe- someone felt some an emotion they love it. yeah they love it it's like oh my god i love this song you heard it for like the 13,000th time you're like really you love it i don't i'm over this man so, so the first album came out alone yeah september last year september of last year september 2019 and by this point you were pretty much playing guitar and singing for six seven years right yeah about yeah six seven years of just hardcore five hours six hour days of just singing and then two or three hours of playing instruments and two hours of learning production and all those elements. Yeah, man, I can definitely say knowing you has been like the most eye-opening thing because you are by far, and I'm really not exaggerating when I say this, 
you have by far the best work ethic I've ever seen in my life. And for people watching this right now, I really hope you just listen to the amount of hours this guy puts in every day. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, I've seen this. You're not working harder than this man. Like, I hate to break it to you. Like, if you want to work harder than this guy, you better have Mamba mentality to the extreme because this guy works all day long. He doesn't take naps. You know what? Though? I've never seen you take a nap, bro. <laughs> I'm surrounding myself with. I don't surround myself. You know this. I don't surround myself with people very often. And you and your brother work hard, and I see it. And we're all just on a path, and we know where we want to be and where we're at. And tomorrow we're going to be at a different level. Sure, that's and the- that's just straight up because of hard, the work we're going to put in and continue to put in. So you're saying I work hard, but I'm surrounding myself with people who work just as hard. I mean, we're all doing it. Everybody's doing it together, you know. It's it's a group thing. It's just, it's a beautiful thing yeah, yeah. to have people that inspire you around you. Like, I can definitely say knowing you has for sure made me a better person. Not only work ethic, but I would just say your approach to life. You know, I feel very grateful to know you and to see how much you've grown, even in the time we've known each other, which has been, which has been really nice to see. So, all right, sh- let's go back to the album real quick. So, how many songs are on this album? There's 12. Um, 12 songs. With a radio edit, so 11. Because you know you're going to hear the song on the radio very soon to everybody watching this, everybody listening to this. Uh, don't be surprised. Just straight up, you know. I don't want to be that dude, but I am going to be that dude. <laughs> don't be surprised. You know you're going to hear it on the radio. Uh, let's talk about some of the influences on this album like what were you listening to uh i know you really love ed sheeran that's That's my guy that's your guy and i'll tell you this i wasn't a big ed sheeran fan till you put me on man there's two things um the first let me answer your question the biggest influence on this album particularly has been you and your brother um you don't realize this but this this album would have been drastically drastically different had I not met you two, for one reason, not your musical style. Um, there I don't think there's many elements of the music that you create in 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 it. It's the fact that you are able to produce as well as you're able to produce. Those are very very kind words, man. For real, from the bottom no, of my heart. No, but like genuinely, love and like, respect, man. For it's real. not about the the kind of music you're creating. It's about the the quality of the music you're creating. And I and I looked at my first album and I was like, man, like it's okay. Like the songs written are pretty good, but the production is just terrible. Um, and I saw what you guys were able to do and create and produce. And I was like, man, I got to step up. If I'm going to produce this album myself and not get other people to produce on it, I have to be able to put out what you guys are putting out. Otherwise no one's going to listen. So that's the first thing. Um, and the reason I'm such a big Ed Sheeran fan, um, was because when I was in college, this was about junior, senior year, at this point, I quit basketball for music, and I started to really like dive deep into getting better, and started playing shows around New York City. And no one showed up to like my first few shows. Like quite literally, no one. I asked every single person on my phone book to come out. the The show was free, by the way. Um, a hundred percent free. No excuse. No excuse. Like, you just like, have to come. <laughs> it's come like on. come out. The show is a hundred percent free. Yeah, I couldn't get anyone to come out, but. Um, L- liter- uh, like, yeah. <laughs> what else do you want you want me to drive you there <laughs> at that point like i was literally but i was playing um sidewalk cafe and it's if you don't know sidewalks one of the venues in new york city where Jimi hendrix and bob dylan and all these other massive massive musicians started out um so i didn't care that any like no one came i was like dude i'm playing sidewalk cafe i literally just came from my bedroom practicing guitar and singing so i was really hype about it but I mean, obviously, it stung when there was nobody there except for a coffee machine and me singing acoustic guitar songs to myself. Um, but cool, cool thing happened though. Um, as I'm finishing up the set, so the way the sidewalk cafe is set up is you have a stage and then you have a bar, but you, like the bar is disconnected from the stage, mm-hmm. so people can sit at the bar, but they are not necessarily there for the show. Um, so this guy, he comes up to me after the show. I had no idea he was even there. He comes up to me. He goes, "Hey, like my boss would." Uh, my my boss is playing a show. Um, here's some tickets. And at the time, like, I I mean, I didn't really know Ed Sheeran at the time, but his boss was Ed Sheeran, and he was playing in Boston. 
Um, this was right at this was I think his multiply tour when he just finished opening up for Taylor Swift on like the Red Jeez. Tour. Jeez. Wild. And so this is like what, like 2014, 2015, something like that? Maybe a little later? Yeah, it was like 2015, wow. 2016-ish. 2015. Yeah. So it um obviously I like had an exam the next day. I was like, oh, I have the flu. And I just like drove out with my with my friend Renat. Um and we went to Boston to go see Ed Sheeran perform. And I'd never been to a concert in my life before that. Wait, so so how old were you in your first concert? You were like what, twenty one? Twenty one, yeah. So you were playing music already for a yeah. couple of years and like taking it seriously. Yeah. And you hadn't been to a concert. Never. And the first concert you go to is Ed Sheeran to like thirty thousand people or something like that. Wild. <laughs> crazy, Wild. crazy. What was that? I can't like I'm sure the energy was just so electric. Oh, You're probably captivated. Dude, I like it was so ridiculous. Like the th- the thing is, concerts are expensive. Like the tickets I got were VIP tickets to see Ed Sheeran. And we five hundred dollar tickets, dude. I'm like, like that. for each ticket, and then it's like a thousand plus for. Oh. <laughs> I'm not spending like sorry guys like. I hope one day my tickets don't cost that much, so everyone can can go and people like I know you and me like. Growing up, we didn't have five hundred dollars to to spend on it on a concert ticket. So the only way we would have went is if they were for free or reasonably priced. So hopefully, there's a like a way for tickets to be priced at reasonable prices so everyone can can go. But that's the main reason I just couldn't afford to go to a two three hundred dollar concert ticket. That's like probably on par for the most Albanian thing I've heard regarding concert tickets. I don't know many Albanian people like. If you are the type of person, please let us know. Reach out in the comment box <laughs> over here. Comment section below. Uh, $500 for a ticket. I'm going to be honest with you here. I never spent $500 on a ticket. The most I spent was $200. And even that was like pretty crazy. I can't lie. But it was for... My voice just cracked pretty badly right there. <laughs> but it was for Kanye. So, Oh, man. All right. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> no Kanye. <laughs> Not on this <laughs> interview. Uh, we're gonna chop that one out bro it doesn't need to be mentioned um where are we at ed sheeran i would like a snapple actually very much thank you very much excuse excuse me i done let me just drink this enjoy it um but yeah so i went to that concert and was blown away by the fact that there was that many people there to watch him perform and sing they knew every single lyric every single word and he was he was on stage by himself. Was by he doing himself, like? Yeah. So it's kind of like what you do too, because I know. Yeah. For anybody who's been to um, an Ed Dunn show, I'm sure you've seen it. The man is literally, again, doing everything again by himself. So, and I've seen this. You bring your piano with you on stage. You bring your guitar, yeah. your microphone, and you have a loop machine. So yeah. you play drums, loop them play piano, loop it, play guitar, loop it, and then sing over it. Yeah, it's, again, the the cheap way to do things. Paying a band is expensive. Hiring musicians is just, I there was no way I can do that in college. So I had to learn how to put on a show. I remember starting, I didn't start off that way. I started playing shows around New York City, just me and an acoustic guitar or a, or a piano, and it would be so loud in these bars that people would not hear a thing I was doing. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to play really loud. And I'm going to put like three different things together and hopefully people will start to listen to me. And they did. So it, it like worked Definitely out. worked out, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's wild. so cool, man. That's, I love, to, I love to hear it. Like, just to hear the progression, you know, because I'm sure a lot of people seeing this and a lot of your fans are people who clearly respect and admire what you do and maybe are singer-songwriters themselves. And so to everybody listening, this is a perfect testament. Your first couple of shows, people might not show up. They will not show up. Most likely not. I'm just trying to be a little positive here. Uh, I can tell you from my experience, my first couple of shows, people do not show up. It is what it is, you know? You just got to charge it to the game and, and, and use it to help motivate you. Like, I'm sure that was a very motivating thing when nobody shows up. Yeah, I, I recorded a video by myself in that room. Yeah. I was like, all right, well, here down the road when people do start to show up. And I watch that a lot, actually. I definitely feel that. I, I know a couple of times where I've DJed to literally this many people. 
except the bartender. But it's, you know what? I will say this. It's something special when, like, the bartender security guard kind of likes what you're doing. You know what? It's better than them not liking what you're doing. <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> somebody it's somebody than, likes it. <laughs> it's better than them being like, what the hell did we hire? Oh, for sure. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So, uh... <laughs> Man. Oh man! So we got the album coming out October fourth. Yeah, this Sunday. About a year after your last album, and this is yeah. your second album, right? Yeah. So you have twelve songs on there. Sure. What's if you had to say what the album sounds like, like, and I don't mean sonically. Yeah. I mean, what does the album feel like to you? Um, there's melancholy all over it. Um, it's kind of almost like a film score. And just watching someone go through life for a year and a half. And that is, there's ups, there's downs, there's happiness, there's love, there's kindness, there's a bunch of different things that occur to people. Um, it's just a my life through the two years. It's it's written in a year and a half, but it's really about like three years of my life. It just Over time, just builds up and becomes this this thing. And I'm sure you probably feel a little weird now that it's done and it's like it's gonna be wild when people hear like the vulnerability i think i think i was you've heard it i didn't i think what was important for me is to just be as honest as humanly possible and not think about what other people are going to say about it like there's some dark lyrics there's some shit about it you know what i mean um my thing was we're all going to go through it i'm sure you've got a million things that you've been through and if I start to like sugarcoat it, then maybe you'll somebody listening will be like, "Oh, like he doesn't have it as bad as I do." But we've all got it pretty bad, you know, in one way or another, and we all overcome it. And there's beauty in that. I think, yeah, that's honestly super well said. I think there's something to be said about music that you just feel. Yeah, just an emotion. You know, and and. I think the most important thing you can do as an artist, and this is for any artist or any singer songwriter and artist. When I say artist, I mean not just music. I mean in any field. And when I say artist, I don't even mean artist as in the creative field. I mean as somebody who decides what their life is. And I'm sure you can attest to this as well. There's something that's simultaneously freeing and still so important about just letting yourself be 100% who you are, good and bad. Without a doubt. I think that, like, for me, I had to learn that. Some people are blessed with the ability to just have it. Um, I had to definitely learn that. Just because I felt the need to always impress, in a sense, of like... Definitely feel that. Younger brother things. Yeah, you want to put on... You know what I mean? Give me some attention. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> basically. Need to, I need to do good so I get attention. But then I... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I feel that. Too. But it's more of like, I think for me, it's like figuring out who I am. And I don't like everyone I meet. You know, I'm a very introverted person. I think human beings can be pretty gross. Um, so, but in my head, no matter how gross I find somebody as a human being and how mean or how cruel somebody can be, I'm still trying to impress that person. Yeah. And it doesn't make any sense. Like, you know you dislike somebody and you don't like what they stand for. For instance, an internet troll or somebody that comes to a concert that's never heard your music and just starts yelling at you and saying you suck. Like, you know that person's probably got some, well, they definitely have something going on and it's insecurity being portrayed out, but you're still trying to impress that person. I mean, that's where I, I, I still struggle with. I'm always trying to figure out why somebody doesn't like me. And it's not it has nothing to do with me. Sure what I want to use it for. The doorman? Nah, well, that's that's pretty cool. And I think we should definitely talk about that a little bit too. Like I know you were a doorman. I was a doorman for a long time. My Nina was a doorman. Erz is a doorman. Where every Albanian's a doorman at some point in their life. Or picking up garbage. Which that's what I want to say. You have to be, and for everybody watching this, uh, you may or may not know it done personally. And I'm not just saying this because he's my friend. 
no point in lying or anything like that. But, dude, you are by far, like, and everybody I've introduced to you always tells me, they're like, yo, Adun is the man. He's the nicest guy on this planet. For real, like. I appreciate that. Knowing you, no, no, all, all jokes aside, like, knowing you has not only made me a better person, but has made me such a nicer person. Like, I was always nice, but, like, yo, you take nice to another level. Nobody is as nice as you. Appreciate that, man. For real, and, and. Like your whole family, man. Just shout out to the Mola family, the you nice, too, man. the nicest people. Seriously, the nicest people. Us meeting, mm, yeah. How we meet? So interesting. The reason I guess I'm nice is just because the world has worked really beautifully for me, and I think putting out positive energy brings positive energy. I strongly believe that. I think if you wake up every day and think, all right. I know this person might not be having a good day because I know I've had really horrible days and there, there are people that have lifted my spirits like you in my end and the people I surround myself with, but there are people that go through really horrific things and they might take it out in weird ways, like driving and honking at you or whatever it is. Like you just need to take in perspective, like, Oh, this person might be having the worst day of their life. And you don't know that. Um, so that's why I kind of live the way I do is just making sure like, it has really nothing to do with me. I, it's more about this this human being's probably going through something difficult and they're not going to tell you because you, you don't know them or yeah. even if you do know them, they might still not Nobody tell you. Nobody wants to share like yeah, super person. personal stuff. Exactly. Um, but it being, that being said, like my life is hilarious in the sense that everything has happened to put me in the position I'm in today. Um, us meeting is one of those stories. You want to talk about the chances of that happening? So one in a billion. Basically, I woke up that morning, the, the morning we didn't meet. Ironically, we didn't meet at the event that we were both at, but um, I didn't know that I was going to this event. And I woke up that morning and I had a friend ask me, hey, like, do you want to play guitar for somebody on tour? And then that person's manager reached out and asked me to go to this event. And I show up to this event and... Basically, I was supposed to play guitar for this person, and one way or another, it didn't work out, and the person just performed without me, which I thought was, you know, interesting, to say the least. But that's okay. Like, I I just still enjoy the interview and being there. Um, did I feel out of place? Probably, but that's all right. I remember, I remember at this event, Ed Dunn was the only person there... <laughs> with a huge guitar case on his back. And I remember thinking to myself, and I told you this, and I just want to say, I'm, my first impressions are always wrong. <laughs> always. You need to know this. I remember thinking to myself, wow, which dude comes to this type of event with a guitar on, you know? Little did I know, though. Little did I know. <laughs> How crazy is that? Wow, the chance is really crazy. Yeah. Slim to none. Slim to none. The universe works in mysterious crazy ways. ways man crazy ways so my bad you were saying uh so that was a one in a billion opportunity there and i didn't talk to anyone at the event aside from the the manager that that asked me to go there and then i get home and i find out that the event wasn't only pretty crappy for me but it was pretty crappy for you um and then i connected with you on that and we just decided like hey like I never listened to your music, to be honest. And I was just like, this guy seems like a really cool dude. Like, let's just get into a studio. And I don't just go into studios with people. Like, Same. same. I, I work on music by myself. Like, as you can tell. Same. Like, all of my music's written, produced by myself. But for some reason, I was like, man, I don't know. Like, I got to get into the studio. He's a cool dude. Yeah. <laughs> he cool seems dude. like a cool guy, man. Like, so we get into the studio and wrote a song in the first, like, five minutes of us getting together. You know, it's, it's even crazier. Because I remember that day. I had class in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know, it was like a Tuesday mm -hmm. or something like that. It must have been last September. Yeah. like Probably, yeah. Yeah, like September right. like 17th or something like that. Yeah, about, about a year at this time. That's crazy. Yeah. Time flies, man. Man, it sure does. Wild. So I remember, <laughs> this was so funny, uh, me and Adun, we reached out, kind of talked to each other for a little bit. And same thing for you, man. Like, honestly, I... I don't really listen to that type of music yeah. a whole lot, you know? And then I also don't like to work with that many people. Like, I'm sure it's the same way for you. It's more important that I like the person and I'm cool mm -hmm. with them. 
because whatever we're going to make is organic and yeah you know, it's not good to force music and i remember that day like waking up really early to go to school i, yeah. I think i woke up at like four that day and coming home at like 12 and i think our session was at like what one or two or something something like that. yeah it and was it was like a 12 hour session 12 hour yeah. session we booked a 12 hour session without knowing each other by the way dude that's wild yeah and i remember i was this close to telling it done like my bad man i'm just so tired today that's wild we really had a 12 hour session the first time we met yeah like the way we met i remember i was at the studio and you texted me you're like i'm here and yeah, went outside dap, yeah. dapped each other up we're like yo what's up man first time we ever met just dapped each other up what's up man how you doing everything good straight to business that was it we probably asked each other like how's your day good you tired cool doesn't matter let's start working and then within five minutes we started working on secrets man wild (laughs) it's crazy we didn't even bother having a real conversation we're just like all right is this i think we were testing each other i think looking back now just like all right, is this dude actually going to do something in this session? Yeah. How, nice is, how nice is he really? Yeah, definitely. How nice is he Let's really? Let's see what he can question. actually put together here. And then I was like, all right, do I have to like do everything in this session or is this person going to? Nah, yeah, nah, man. Nah, and then <laughs> no. he started killing it. I was like, all right. Same, same for you. This is up. I remember thinking like, all right, is he a singer or is he like a dude with a guitar? You know what I'm saying? Like everybody knows that one guy comes with an acoustic guitar starts singing wonder wall yeah. yeah like immediately trying to impress some some girls or something now nah, but i remember thinking like man this guy's like he's killing it he's singing he's killing it i was like i gotta step up i gotta make sure i can't look like a slacker you know dude and then, and then we bonded over reese's we bonded over reese's yeah and what was wild is i'd never really worked with a producer before and i was just like Honestly, I was just stealing everything you were doing in my head. I, respect I, was, you. I was like, wait, same, what did you do? Can you you go back and show me what you just did? Because that's unbelievable. And then, I mean, to be honest, I haven't stopped stealing since since we met. And Genius steals. You see? That's why you're smart, man. I just stole everything. Like Steal. Not the music you're creating, but the, yeah, of course, the, the, the production the techniques production and everything. Ideas. Of course, yeah. man. And I'm just like, all right, I'm going to use that on that album. And D- don't think I haven't <laughs> been practicing some singing either, you know? <laughs> Man, I love it. I love it. I love it. But, oh man, about to make a. So back to the album. Yeah, October fourth. Yeah, man. How 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 hyped are you? Like just for man. people to hear it. I mean, honestly, like I'm nervous about it to be honest because it's just so vulnerable and so open. It's not an album that's like, I guess the best way to describe it is almost like someone reading your diary. Like, there's happy music. Like, Dance With Me is, like, a happy banger, I think. But, like, it's not a happy album where it's, like, do I want people to know everything about me? It's more of... Because I'm a very shy and, like, quiet dude. Like, you know me. And people that do know me, they they know how quiet I am in social events and stuff. But it's just going to be interesting because I know there's going to be someone out there. Um, It's already started to happen with some of the songs I've released. But someone out there will be like, hey, like can't believe you went through that i went through that and it just feels better knowing that someone else in this world has gone through it shared the experience with you right and i think knowing that you're not alone and that it's you know like everyone goes through something that it might not even be the same same thing but just knowing that someone else is going through something it just empowers in a weird way you don't feel alone anymore yeah, the shared pain is kind of makes it a little, a little easier, easier yeah. yeah it makes it that's the most important thing i think is to not feel alone which by the way is the title of adun's first album so if you haven't checked that out be sure to check that out came out last year around this time so hopefully we're gonna make some dance happy music after i mean it doesn't have to just be dance happy music you know for sure it's gonna be vulnerable but our our first and technically only song released even though we got stuff in the stash is like like a rock it's a rock song about someone spouses cheating on each other, which happens. Which happens, you know? and and it's, it's a blessing. Secrets. It's a blessing. It's a blessing sometimes, you know, it's a blessing in disguise. Everything works out for a reason, yeah. as has evidently been the case so far. So, you have two singles, two videos out for the album so far, yeah. six a.m. and Cabin in the Woods, which I know you co-directed, but I'd also like to take this time out to give a special shout out to Mister. Erzin Gashi, who is the man, huge by the way. Out. Huge shout out. Going to be 
one of the craziest directors, not just videos. He's about to start doing films too. So definitely be on the lookout for Urs. Shout out to Urs. So what was the experience like shooting videos for the album? Like, Um, so it's 6 a.m. in Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. So those are the two. um, I'm going to be shooting Dance with Me and and for Marita, but those two were. I wanted to take more time with them. Um, I remember shooting Cabin because I was so beyond stressed about having to take a group of people to a to a cabin in Pittsburgh with a rant like it was a random group of people basically like we I met the actress and we all went to dinner and then after dinner I was panicking because everyone was having so much fun I was just like all right like stressed <laughs> it's like damn how's this gonna happen <laughs> everyone's just gonna have a lot of fun which is, is is awesome and I want people to have fun but I also wanted to get a really dope video um so I just kept like warning everyone in the group I was like look guys like we're going to have fun, but it's going to be, we're going to wake up really early and, and, and finish really late and, and work really, really hard. Um, the, the fun thing is it was your birthday that weekend. So we got to celebrate you. Shout out. Um, shout out to you guys. And thank you very much, by the way. So that was like, man, it was such a great trip. So we woke up really early, worked really hard, celebrated a lot. We, I think we slept like two hours a night. Yeah, for sure. Like, barely slept. yeah like maybe maybe two hours yeah like, no i don't i don't remember really um but we were up sleeping. straight up like 48 hours <laughs> and driving for like six hours home yeah, which was, was crazy far drive man dude crazy yeah far drive, like to pennsylvania i think you know yeah right shout out to all the people in the state of pennsylvania by the way yeah. Just, if you're watching this and you're from pennsylvania shout out to you guys shout, shout out, out to you. Alyssa and shout out to Alyssa Eve and and macy and shout out to all been part of the 6 a.m videos and the antonio and everybody who's been a part of it yeah it wouldn't be the same and shout out to shaw shaw massive shout out to you dude. shout out to shaw we need to just talk about this for a second we, i needed i had a video it thought in my head of so basically the story of 6 a.m is to my two best friends um we all went out and we had a night out in new york city and i saw them together and realized that that's what i want in the future is that level of love um they spent the whole night together and they're happily married and have a child now but that's the goal right like music is beautiful and i I love it very much it's always gonna be a part of my life but giving someone all like everything i earn and and work toward i want to be able to give that to somebody and hopefully someone i romantically can be compatible with but would you say you want to give all of me (laughs) (laughs) So it looked like you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, at, when the night was over, they got into a taxi cab and started going home. So I was inspired by that. And just the thought of what it would feel like to be in a taxi cab going home with the person you know you're going to spend the rest of your life with. The, the difficult part was finding a yellow taxi cab that would let you borrow their taxi for, for, the, for the entire night. Um, and then my Lind came through. And Vest came through and got a taxi through my man Shaw. And shout out to Shaw. Huge, huge, huge shout out. Like, you brought the music video full circle and made it special. Otherwise, we would have took like, my Lynn's car and, and it would have been it. You know, painted that, it yellow. <laughs> yeah, we would have painted it yellow. Put a fake taxi emblem <laughs> on it. Maybe get stopped by cops a couple times. So, it's massive thank you to you. Like, seriously, couldn't have done sure. it without you. For sure. And massive shout out to everybody involved yeah for with sure the videos so you said you're shooting uh actually before i go to that point i do want to uh expand on the point you said like there's something special about being in that type of relationship and i i want to hone in specifically on this one sentence you're going home with somebody you love like that i think it's a very interesting thing because home is more of a feeling than a place oh for sure you know so it's kind of interesting to be going home with your home already you know and i just wanted to to expand that on that point if you're in the position in your life where you're lucky enough to have somebody and it doesn't have to be like a romantic relationship just people you really care about uh you're blessed you know you're really blessed and and everybody does find that at some point in their life like god willing you know but uh love man it's the most powerful thing love is the most powerful thing i feel like i can't speak for you i can definitely speak for myself all the music I make, love. Yeah, it comes from a place of love. Another, yeah. It's about love. It's everything comes down to love at the end of the day. And my relationships with people, and I know you're the same way. 
like, without a doubt. You're I definitely one of the most loving. Each other. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely one of the most loving people I know, for sure. Um, so you're shooting a couple other videos, right? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about those. Oh, we're taking our time with these ones. Um, not that we didn't take time with the other ones. I think we just, as a like our little team, I guess we can call a it now. unit. A little unit dream um, team. We just want to put out videos and content that's as good as we can possibly make it. Um, and we had ideas and we had things we were we were starting with, but we just scrapped it. We didn't think it was good enough yet, and we're gonna wait until something is really that good. And we've got some ideas, and we're just gonna take our time with it. Greatness or nothing. Yeah, we don't want to put anything out, and you guys just not enjoy it. Just not. We don't want to waste your time. Yeah, mediocrity is definitely not rewarded around here whatsoever. Uh, man, you wanna you wanna give any uh closing statements? You wanna give some advice to all the young people out there that look up to you? Because I know there are a lot of people that look up to you, and I'm younger than you are by a year. I look up to you, man. I'm like, wow, that's my guy. Like, man. and even older people look up to you. Not only because you're tall, ladies. Just so you know, he's. <laughs> Six foot four, by the way, just so you know. Uh, but just who you are as a person, you know. And I know I said that maybe three or four times. I appreciate during, that. During man. this interview. You're the man. You Man. You're the man, you know. Dude, like, it's a blessing to know you and Mylin and Erzen and the team. Um, it's just, you need to, like, I'd never had it, you know. Like, my brother's my biggest supporter. I love him to death. He's been there for me through it all. But he's not a musical dude, and he's got a million things. And like, we both work extremely hard. But it's nice to, to be able to work with somebody in the same, same, field. same field, same industry, and just all have the same mentality of just, like, not only are we working as hard as we humanly can, but... In the instance, I know for a fact if I needed you guys for something, whether it's personal or it's or an interview or whatever it is, like whatever we do everything, <laughs> we're, we're gonna do it. Like, and I know you drop anything, I would drop anything for goes you. Goes without like, saying. Goes without saying. Um, so that's been the biggest blessing this year for me, for sure. Um, I think the advice I would give to anyone listening who's still hopefully listening, maybe definitely listen. <laughs> People are definitely interested in what you have to say. Um, I think the biggest thing is do not let fear stop you from wanting to do something. Um, starting, I, luckily, like I never thought of music when I started as something other than fun. Like it was never a thought to, to be great at it. It was, it was just, I really enjoy doing it and I'm not great at it yet, but hopefully I can continue to get better. But, um, people have this misconception of like, you're either born with musical talent or you're not. And that ex applies especially to singing. I was Definitely. the worst singer on the planet when I first started. Um, and singer, guitar player, piano, and violin, like all these instruments, you can learn. Like songwriting, you can learn. Production, you can learn. Um, anything it is that you're working toward, whether it's sports or it's music or it's education, it's just literally how many hours you put into it, and that's what you'll get out of it. There's no secret to it. There aren't. You get lucky and you get to meet somebody that will maybe push your career forward. But if you're not prepared for that moment, it ain't going to happen. It's yeah. You're either built for it or you're not, you know, I like that, that, uh, saying people say, uh, what is it? Luck happens when talent meets opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. You just need to stay on point all the time and just make sure that when that opportunity comes, you got to grab it. That's it. Cause yeah. nobody's going to just tell you to come on stage and sing in front of 10,000 people like Ed Sheeran. Yeah, no way. But you yeah, work hard it. enough, like, just build it up organically and it's going to happen. Um, before we end this interview, I've seen the cover to this beautiful album. Yeah. And it's shot by the very, very talented Mr. Fadil Berisha. So uh, tell us a little bit about that experience. You were there with me, man. Um, tell other people about <laughs> this experience. <laughs> um, I think... I remember when we wrapped up shooting, I thought, I mean, I was nervous the entire time. Um, but I think what was pretty great was there, you were there. And not only now can I say, like, it really happened, guys, because I have someone there to, like, prove it. Really. No, <laughs> no. 
um was the coolest thing was being so nervous but for did like being one of the most humble and like i know you were there with me and you saw it with your own eyes how kind this guy was like he knew i was nervous but was able to bring out what he needed to bring out of me to to, to portray what i wanted to portray and it like start to finish of the photo shoot it was more of like him trying to figure out what i wanted to say versus him taking just pictures you know yeah. um really evoking the emotion exactly from a still and then i i was so emotional and and it was so vulnerable like in my head i was so vulnerable with it the, f the picture we ended up taking in the album cover is so vulnerable to me that i i remember spending like two weeks talking to you guys about it and saying oh this isn't it because i was so nervous about being that vulnerable in a picture like it was I don't, like I don't know. I was sweating. Um, Beads of sweat. I was literally sweating from being so nervous, and we were shooting for maybe an hour. It wasn't even like we were exhausted, but I just looked like you're gonna see the picture and understand where I'm coming from. But I just looked exhausted. To be fair, it was hot that day. It was like August fourth <laughs> or something like that. It was hot, but to be, I, I don't think anyone was sweating protruding like. I don't know. It was pretty hot that day. I was I was feeling a little hot. <laughs> but basically, like I was so vulnerable in the picture that I didn't want to put that out there because most most of the time your album cover is like this really beautiful picture of like you looking great. I don't look make it look as perfect as humanly possible. Like. And this picture is literally me sweating, exhausted, and my hair all over the place. Like it's not something that's gonna be on a cover of a billboard. You know, like, and still watch it be on a cover of a billboard <laughs> because those are the moments that it happens the most like when you're vulnerable when you are who you are despite what people think about you despite what people care about you that's when people and this is the most important thing people feel you they feel your energy yeah. people know what's up and like i would also like to make that point to again give another shout out to mr fadil berisha Huge. because i can definitely say this man has one of the nicest people i've ever met Man. and does so much for the albanian community unreal and just like uplifts and that's really the goal and and i'm speaking for myself and i'm sure you probably feel the same way like that's the goal man we're just trying to uplift and help, help as many generation. people yeah it's it's about the next generation of people and try to inspire people because we've been inspired we have yeah and we've been blessed to to be in the position to kind of help in any way possible all right so there you have it the official interview with Ed Dunn. Uh, if you're not following him already, follow him at... Ed Dunn M. Ed so Dunn M. Ed Dunn M if you're English. So the Albanians say Ed Dunn. Everybody else says E Dunn. Uh, Ed Dunn M, that's on Instagram. Yeah. Twitter. Uh, and then it's This Is a Dunn. This Is a Dunn on Twitter. And Facebook. Yeah. And Facebook. So be sure to follow. Uh, and YouTube as well is... This Is a Dunn. This yeah. Is a Dunn. So... You're going to see it somewhere maybe up here, maybe somewhere over here. I don't know. What's the thumbnail going to be like? Something like this? I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. We'll take it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, this is Adon. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Adon M. This is not a middle finger. This is a ring finger. Adon M on Instagram. Uh, any closing last remarks? Uh, man, it's just a blessing to know you guys, especially you best like. Changed my life, dude, like, from, from a positive perspective. All love, bro. All love. We're just trying to el help elevate each other. And I, I think can... no one makes it on their own. And I'm glad you're a part of this journey, my journey, and I know I'm going to be part of your journey. So For sure, man. We're on this together. Uh, reminds sure. me of this quote I always loved hearing, which is... High School Musical? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to... to together. <laughs> uh, if you want to go somewhere fast, go alone. If you want to go somewhere far, go with the team. There's something special to be said about having a team around you that that uplifts you and works hard and and does all of that. So yeah. the way you feel about me, the feeling is most definitely mutual, man. I can definitely say knowing you and your whole family and obviously knowing my brother because I was born yeah. <laughs> with having him as my brother. And again, shout out to Mr. Erz, who's the man. Uh, he can't be with, here with us today, but shout out to you, Erz. Huge shout out, man. Uh, we're all in this together. Q High School Musical Song.